Welcome back. Welcome back to the biggest agricultural platform in Namibia known as Nduna Wengombe, which means headman of cattle. My name, of course, is Mitchell Mutumba Simata, aka the headman of cattle. Today on the today on the 29th of October 2021, which is a Friday, I felt this is one of the new segments that I want to introduce, which will be Friday, will be days for cultivars, where we'll speak of crops, maize, sugar cane fruits and veggies. We'll speak of all type of crops, all type of cultivars that are native and indigenous to Namibia and those that are native and indigenous to Namibia and Africa and those that are being imported into uh, the country. So Friday, we'll put that day aside for, for discussions on cultivars. So this video is going to be about guavas. The guava which most of us have uh, probably consumed once upon a time. Maybe you like it in different forms. The fruit, dried fruit, juice or yeah, juice or I've seen guava jam or in other type of products guava is turned into, the fruit is turned into. So without wasting time, you guys know I'm never writing with my, never writing solo, I'm writing with my trusted notebook. Without wasting time, let's get into the information of uh, how to start up a guava plantation. Guavas are high in vitamin C, a very good source of vitamin C. The tree gives good shade because they do not uh, lose their leaves in winter. So it keeps its leaves all year round. They give fruit two years after being planted. They are, if, after being planted, as long as they've been given enough water. So they don't, they have vitamin C, they don't lose their leaves, they keep their leaves all year round. They, they start bearing fruit within two years time after being planted. So those are the first three things. Where do guavas grow best? Guavas grow best in hot areas, which do not get any frost meaning very cold weather, where the temperature drops extremely to the, to the below freezing point. They don't like that. They can, however, grow in most places where the winters are not too cold. So if you're in a country where there's winter, they can grow, as long as the winters are not too very, very cold and very severe. So the tree doesn't like very cold weathers. If they are planted where there is a little frost, the young trees must be, must be covered. So if you're planting your guavas, let's say in an area where winters go below zero or go below one or go minus one you probably need to cover the the trees with with the insulator blanket there is the insulator blankets you can probably purchase from your agricultural stores or your or your nurseries they would sell that the tree should be planted in a place where they are protected from cold winds so they don't like to be they, they don't like to be in open areas where there are cold winds blowing so you conceal it and plant it in areas where the wind, which is very cold, will not get to it. Kind of fruit and trees, the kind of guava, guava cultivars you find. You get the fan retief, the fruit is pink inside. I think this is the most common one. The fan retief is the one which is pink inside. I think this is the one we all know. White guava, the fruit is white inside. As the name says, it's white guava, the, white, the guava which is white inside. Cherry or Chinese guava. It can grow in areas where some frost, where there is some frost. You can even plant it in barrels or drums. So the cherry or the Chinese guava and grow in cold areas can be planted in a plant pot or in drums. So this doesn't need to be planted in the soil. Then there's the soil requirements for guavas. Although guavas grow well in any kind of soil, they prefer well-drained soil that does, not re that does not remain. They prefer well-drained soil where water doesn't remain in the soil for a long time after rain. So they prefer soil that is well drained. They don't like soil, let me say, uh, is it loam, clay loam, clay loam type of soil that probably holds the water for too long and that they do not like that. They want soil that can get wet, water drains right through it. They're able to get what they need in their roots and then from there the water goes further. So they can't, I don't think they'll be able to grow in clay loam. Probably in sandy loam is the perfect soil to grow them. They say planting dates of guavas. Guavas can be planted at any time of the year, but the warmer months are better. Any time of the year, but you target the warmer months. That'll be the best time to plant your guava. Spacing of your guava plants. Plant them two to three meters from, uh, from other trees. So that's the two to three meters. I think that's the spacing. And five meters from other guava trees. So that'll be the distance from each other. Planting. Dig a hole about twice the size of the bag which the young guava tree came in. This is when you purchase it now from the nursery. When you purchase it from the nursery, it's going to come in a, in a, in a, in a bag with, with sand. Or if you planted it yourself and you're removing it now from a plant pot into the sand, you need to make sure the hole you're digging is 
the size or is, 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 is twice, it's twice the size of the, of the plant pot. So when you do the transplant, the sand that you're removing from the plant pot and putting into the ground, the hole is bigger than that. They say when you're digging, you need to remove some soil from, uh, remove some soil from the hole and also put some compost and manure and mix that, and mix that with some of the soil. So you put some compost, manure, you mix it with the soil before you plant it. When a and when you are removing now the guava from either the plant pot or the bag, do not disturb the sand in the bag and place the tree at the center of the hole and make sure that you cover it. You cover enough soil that you fill the hole that the soil that you're filling is more than, is, 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 um, is leveled with the top soil. So you need to make sure that you cover it properly. And then um, irrigation, you would need to irrigate, you'd need to irrigate the tree. Uh, you'd also need to irrigate the tree after planting it. So that's very important, particularly if you're doing a transplant, you grew it in a plant pot or you purchased it from a nursery. You remove it from the bag, you put it into the soil gently, and then you water it afterwards. You have to make sure that you water it. So the water, water requirements for guavas. Water the tree every two to three weeks in, three, in, in dry seasons. Apply mulch around the tree to keep the soil moist and prevent it from dying out. Um, uh, mulch helps to save water. So mulch could be leaves, mulch could be leaves, could be uh, livestock feeds such as hay or offcuts or even sawdust. You can utilize that as mulch to put around your tree. Or you can purchase material from nurseries. They do sell mulch in a bag. Then the pruning of the guavas. In October, after the fruit has been uh, picked, you should prune the tree. Trim the tree to get a cup shape. So after you've harvested, you prune the tree and you need to get a cup shape. So I believe probably a glass, a cup shape, probably a teacup, a cup shape. Cut out the dead wood every year. Remove some of the branches at the tip of the bigger branch so that they are, so that, so that there are buds, six, so that there are six buds left from the base. Thin out the cross branches. And then uh, that's how you go about uh, uh, doing guava plantations. I got further information here where they say in South Africa now, this is based in South Africa. I couldn't get information on Namibia guava planting. I think most people plant probably guavas in their yards for their own consumption. So they say guava production in South Africa is done in the northern regions of South Africa. It has more than half over the decade due to devastating impact of guava wilt. This is a uh, disease guava trees get, very devastating. Well, the disease is contagious and there is no cure for it. Farmers are therefore replacing guava orchards with other crops. So that's what happens. Um, it says, in the, it, it continues to say here that in the Western Cape, which is free of the disease, guava orchards have declined from 633 hectares in 2017 to 542 hectares because farmers have removed the trees due to low profits. Approximately 70% 70, 70 of guava harvests was still was still sent to juice to juice makers, which simply did not justify the high labor costs associated with the production. The fresh fruit market was lucrative but limited, accounting only to twenty four percent of production. So that's what guavas do. They only account for twenty four percent of production. It seems like in South Africa they're more popular with being sent to the juices, citrus juice and all this Rhodesian juice. So that's what they do. Hey, that's that's what they love to do. Um I just need to get numbers here. Okay, globally, globally, South Africa is a small player in the global market. They only produce about 32,000 tons to 35,000 tons. India is the largest. With, they, produce, they produce approximately about 20.7 20, 20 million tons of guavas in 2020, followed by China, which produces 5.16 million tons of guavas. In Africa, both Egypt and Nigeria were bigger producers of guavas in South Africa, accounting to 1.16 million tons to, to 949,000 tons. So that's between the two countries. So South Africa still is a very, still playing a very small role. So South Africa is playing such a small role. We as Namibia probably are non-existent, eh? <laughs> I believe we're probably non-existent in this market. Because South Africa can only produce 32 to about, to 32 to about 35,000 tons that um, that does tell a lot. So there is a market. There is room for South Africa to actually expand. But the first thing is, as the as the information said, guava wilt is a problem. That's the first thing. The second thing is the market. The market is is quite small. Most guava producers are producing for juices 
and even though you are making money from the juices, you're not making enough to justify things such as uh, pro uh, labor costs and production costs. It does not make sense because probably what you are spending is a lot of money on production producing the guavas, you know, such as the manures and fertilizers and implementations you need to have your guava farm running and running productively. So in South Africa, the Western Cape, the Western Cape is actually the biggest uh, hub for most guavas because they say the, the Western Cape, in the Western Cape, the harvest, they, the Western Cape harvested 22,716 tons and in the same year, they can harvest 23,715 tons in, the, in a season. So the Western Cape has the lion's share when it comes to the guavas. So that's guava production. Can, you, can it be a business that you can get into? I think it is a business you can get into. But I think, I believe also just like strawberries, before you decide to get into the business, make sure that you first do a market research to establish if there could be a market for you. Because the, bad, the worst thing that you could do is what the is what the information said here, is planting half a hectare of guavas and not knowing who's going to buy them. Now you have guavas, you probably supply them to a juicing company, Ritfontein Juicy in Namibia. What other juice do we produce here? I believe Ritfontein, I don't know other brands, but most of them are now Ceres are South African, Rhodesian is South African, or Rhodes is South African, but uh, um, uh, uh, Ritfontein Juice. Now you're supplying, now you're producing guavas to supply them. That's one share of a market. But... What if you want to sell fresh guava producers? Who are you going to sell it to? So it's very important that you, before you even start planting, you do you carry out a, a very um, qualitative market research to first establish if there is a market for juicing, for fresh fruit, for drying, and for other guava products that you could probably make. That there is a market that you're going to be able to sell it to. Then you go into doing it. That will be the right way to do it. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, I'd love to say, do me before I end this video, I'd love to ask you guys, to do me two favors if you enjoyed the content that i put out on this video give me a huge thumbs up if you enjoyed uh, and if you give me a huge thumbs up and subscribe to the page and turn on the bell notification and share the video let's get the viewership up and let's get the subscription base up with that said ladies and gentlemen enjoy your friday bye for now